Hi everyone, welcome to Xcoding with Altian. In this video, we're going to add CloudKit syncing to our Swift database node application. So, we built this Swift database node application in the previous video tutorial. If you haven't watched that video, I'll provide the link at the description below. It's basically a one hour video where we use Swift data to build this node application with many to many relationships between nodes and tags. So you can create node and then associate it with multiple tags. And automatically the tag itself will be associated with multiple nodes that you tag with. Now we're going to basically add a syncing mechanism using CloudKit. So all user nodes and tags will be synced across their devices. And here, as you can see, I have my iPhone simulator and this is the uh, Mac application running the Swift UI Nodes app. So let me show you the demo. Let's begin by creating a node from the iOS simulator. Give it a name of Apple Vision Pro. Save it. Nice. The Apple Vision Pro is synced to the Mac application from the iOS simulator. Amazing. Now let's create a node from the Mac application. MacBook Air 15. Save it. Nice. As you can see, the MacBook Air 15 is synced from the Mac application to the iOS simulator. So these two devices are using the same iCloud account. And as you can see, the data for that particular iCloud account is seen across all devices. So this is the functionality that we are going to add, basically cloud syncing using a Swift database application. So let's begin. First, you can just go, you can continue from the previous video if you have followed, but if you haven't, you can just go to the this, this GitHub repository, not app Swift data. I provided the link to the description and then just check out from this tag at CloudKit Syncing Starter and then you can download or clone the project. Okay, and then open the Xcode Poch file in your Xcode. So you will require Xcode 15 to begin this video and you will also need to be enrolled in the Apple Pet member developer account because you, uh, you need to enable the silent remote push notification as well as the CloudKit container entitlement. So, but if you just want to follow along, you can just watch this video. So, I've downloaded the Postator project, and now let's begin. So, now let's add the CloudKit syncing capability to the Swift Data application. Select the not Swift Data target from here and select Signing and Capabilities tab. And first, we need to add a capability for background modes. Okay, this will use the silent push notification. So basically Apple will send a remote not silent notification telling the device that, hey, there is something change in the cloud kit. You need to basically perform the sync. So check this, background modes and remote notification. Second, we need to add iCloud capability to our application and we need to check this cloud kit because we are going to use cloud kit and for me i'm going to use this alfian losari dot not app for my container okay so i check this one container for me for you if you don't have any container yet you can just create your own container and check it here okay make sure to only check one container because the Swift data will automatically infer to this one container, okay? And yeah, push notification itself will be added in here because we have set these remote notifications. So as you can see, it creates the entitlement for us as well. There are several things that I want to add in here. First is app sandbox, okay? And in here, I just want to set the value to yes. Yeah, that is basically the only thing that we need to add to enable cloud kit syncing for a Swift database application, okay? So background mode with the remote notification and the cloud kit container, okay? And just by adding that, Swift data will automatically infer the 
cloud key container that we have added to our application based on this entitlement okay and it would basically use that cloud key container to sync the data but actually if you want to configure it you can also configure it by yourself if you have a custom cloud key identifier and you want to pass them manually you can just basically pass this in the model container configuration itself but for this we just use the automatic behavior provided by the xcode okay so that's it for the our app now let's try to build this right let me select my simulator okay let me try to build you say you don't have any nodes yet and if you see from the debugger in here i think there will be a lot of error yeah so let's pause uh, stop this so it's an error store fail to load right so if you see a core data error occurred codekit integration requires that all attributes be optional okay so there are several uh, requirements made by apple to enable cloudkit syncing for the swift database application first all attributes need to be optional or have a default value set okay let's go to not model first yeah, if you see here, content and created ad, they are not optional and they don't have default value. So let's just fix this by assigning them default value. For content, I just assign with the empty string. For the created ad, I just assign with the current date. Okay. Let's say again in here. Plotkit integration does not support unique constraints. Okay. So with Plotkit syncing in Swift data, we cannot also use this unique constant attribute so yeah for now i think it's okay to enable clock in syncing just remove that unique attribute constraint and let, what's next clock kit integration requires that all relationship be optional the following are not tags and nodes for the not and tag instance okay so basically the relationship itself in here needs to be optional for the cloud kit syncing to work in uh, Swift data. Okay, so let's make this optional. Okay, let's make this optional. Also, in the tag, we have updated or not model, not tag. Tag also, we need to remove this attribute unique for the ID. For the name, let's provide the full value of empty string. And relationship, it needs to be optional, right? For this transient check. It's not a problem because this is not persistent. Okay, let's try to build. Let's see, build, build fail. So let's fix this several error first, right? Because we have changed this to optional. Okay, so in here, we need to basically just use if let nodes, if let unwrap, and then in here, let's use the nodes itself that we get from the let that we unwrap for each node. And in here also, not I should be assigning this right tag nodes and then nodes dot count. Okay, so this is solved for the tag dot nodes. Now let's update this not that tax. So if let tax not that tax comma tax dot count. And then in here we we'll just use the tax from the if let okay let's start to build okay now the build succeeded we have updated the code to use the new uh type now one thing before we try this right you need to make sure you uh need to sign it sign in first using your icloud account so i have signed in using my icloud account in here your, my apple id okay because to enable cloud syncing it will use the user icloud for the authentication okay so it can sync the related user data across the user on devices okay that's one thing make sure you sign in using your apple id now let's try to build let's see i cannot see my data got sync so this usually happen because the beta one i think is still a bit uh flaky so if this happened just restart the app again okay and as you can see 
now my all my notes got synced properly my notes and my text as well okay so that is okay for beta one right if that happens just kill the app restart again it should be synced properly sometimes you need to restart twice to be able to resync okay especially if you want to sync for the first time so that's one thing but i think that will be solved by the time this Swift data become stable by the release of iOS 17.0 and macOS 14 so no more. I won't be creating the macOS application for this but you can check the completed project that I have provided in the description below if you want to check out the macOS application okay. So to test this right I recommend you to use a real iOS device instead simulator right because I think simulator won't be able to receive remote notification from CloudKit so even if you use a physical iOS device sometimes itself the remote the remote notification can be a bit flaky sometimes you are able to receive but sometimes you won't be able okay and usually the latency to receive the message right it's around like 10 to 15 seconds right so it's not like a real real time like one to two seconds okay and also i think currently for the beta the syncing for the deletion itself is a bit flaky so something it works something you need to restart the app several times for it to get sync properly for the deletion but i think most of the time for the insertion itself it sure works right if you use a physical ios support in the device to test okay so that's it for this very short video to enable CloudKit syncing and you can check the completed project it will contain all the macOS application itself oh yeah for the macOS application itself you will request Sonoma and I think for macOS remote notification should work right because you are running it on the real Mac hardware right so it should work for the macOS application so that's it for this short video like the video if you like subscribe if you haven't and thanks for supporting me and let's keep on being a lifelong learner. Goodbye.